morning, everyone. It's so good to be among the family of the living God. I had a different lesson for this Sunday, but I decided to change my mind and to be start working a, diff a different lesson. And the title of the lesson for this morning is Troubled Hearts. John chapter 14, verse 1 through verse 6. This, all these passages that we find in John chapter 14, verse 1 through verse 6, this is a biblical passage that satisfies us in the difficult moments of life. Perhaps the most popular set of verses of the New Testament. Almost everybody knows about this, these verses in the Bible. And probably John chapter 14, verse one through verse six, it are Bible, Bible court passages that take us from tribulation to triumph. The purpose of this lesson for this morning is that to encourage one another to see beyond the problems or struggles or temptations or trials that we have daily in our life. We read in the Bible that Jesus was, he was calm in times of danger. Even knowing that many trials were coming, he was calm. And they decided to go to Jerusalem. They came to Jerusalem with his disciple, with his friend, to celebrate the Passover, and they choose a high room <clears throat> to eat the last Passover feast, or last supper, or last dinner. The, this was his last Passover with his friends. That same night, Jesus watched the disciples' feet. John chapter 13 says all this. He was eating the last Passover with his friends, and he washed the feet of his friends. He was giving a great lesson, showing and demonstrating that he didn't care that he was God. He took the form of a servant and he humbled himself. And he was watching the feet of his friends. And this was a, 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 a great lesson of humility and teaching them that they it's necessary to do the same one another. But at the same night, Jesus revealed the test sign. He revealed that Judas shall betray him for 30 pieces of silver. It was a moment of tr trial for Jesus, but he was calm. I know that it's very hard, very difficult to be calm when we have problems, when we got a, a struggles, when we got a trials, when we got temptations, it's not easy. When we are suffering, it's not easy to be calm. But it's necessary to be calm to know how to solve the situation. And Jesus was calm. He knew he revealed the, te the test time. The tests are coming. Judas shall betray me for 30 pieces of silver. He already washed 
Judas feet in John chapter 13. Even knowing that the betrayer was among the group, he also decided to wash his feet. It was kind. What about Peter? He knew that Peter should deny him three times. Before the rooster cross, you will deny me three times. And Jesus also said to Peter, Simon, Simon, or Peter, Peter, Satan demanded permission to shake you like wheat. When I was a child, I remember I went to the fields uh, to cut uh, rice, no wheat, but rice. And we had to be shaking all the, uh, all the branches of our rice to get to remove the grains of rice from the branches. And we had to be shaking harder to get all the grains of rain or rice, I mean. And Jesus is saying to Peter, that's almost exactly that Satan is asking. He's asking permission to shake you like wheat. The purpose of, of Satan is destroy you. He wants to, I know that you will deny me, but I have prayed to my father. That your faith, that your faith may not fail. And Jesus also saw that Peter turned back. And he said to Peter, I know that you, after that, after the temptation, you turn back and you will be straightening your brothers. God is listening our prayers all the time. He knows that we are going to be tempted. He knows that we are going to be in trials. We sure, you, we, we sure have to face up difficult times. Romans chapter 8, verse 18. The apostle Paul said, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that is to be revealed to us. That's the Holy Spirit is saying through the Apostle Paul. I consider that the sufferings of this present time, sufferings, are not worthy to be compared with the glory. The things that the Lord God is offering are incomparable with the sufferings or trials that we have in this earth. We can compare. It's going to be something much better. The, the Apostle Paul said, the glory that is to be re revealed to us. This body is perishing day after day. But the Bible says to us, that we are going to have a glorious body later. The problems are affecting to us every day. But we are going to have better things. This is only temporary. It's not forever. And the Apostle Paul knew that. When he wrote to the Romans, he said, I understand. Even the Apostle Paul he had to suffer persecutions and many problems. He was in prison, in jail, but he was happy. He preached to a king, and the, the king said to him, you almost persuade me to be a Christian. And the apostle Paul said, I, 
I'm not trying, I'm not wishing that not only you to be, to become a Christian, but all the people that is hearing in this room right now, that you share the joy that I'm having. The Apostle Paul was so happy because he was Christian. And the Apostle Paul said, accept this shame. He got something that was the most important. The Christian, the people of God, we have the most important things. That is the salvation in Jesus Christ. That's the most important thing. Sometimes we're reading in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. The apostle Paul said again, he's saying, No temptation has overtaken you, but such as is common to men. Every temptation that we are having is something common to us. And the Apostle Paul adds, and God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But God is faithful. That's what Jesus said to the, to the Apostle Peter. I have prayed for you. And once when you turn back, you will be straightening your brothers. God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. Every temptation that we are having in our daily life is a temptation that we are able to resist. But with the temptation, God will provide the way of escape also. Peter was tempted and denied the Lord Jesus three times. He started crying and crying and he saw Jesus and he repented. There is a way. Always is a way. It's the same case with Judas. There was a way. He sell the Lord, but there, there was a way. Jesus was also waiting for him, but he didn't want to repent. The Lord is always providing a way of escape also. So, the Apostle Paul said, so that you will be able to endure it. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. Sometimes, brothers and sisters, we are going through things that we don't, we don't think they could, we could resist. And sometimes, brothers and sisters, most of us, we are going through things that we don't think we could happen. But happen. But then is when, when Jesus show up or appear. And Jesus says, encouraging us, do not let your heart be troubled. Do not let your heart be troubled. We let. If we start thinking in the problems, in the trials, in, in the difficult times, all these things start to growing up. Jesus said, do not let your heart be troubled. Believe. Believe in God. But let's start with this, this first word, believe. This is a word that can change our life. If we believe in God, this can change everything. Believing. What is belief? What is believing? Believing is exercising faith. 
we got the definition of faith in the Bible. In, in the book of Hebrews, in the chapter 11. But what is, what is believing or what is to have faith? The Bible said that love makes all things easy. But the Bible also said that faith makes all things possible. If we got faith in God, all things are going to be possible. That's what Jesus says all the time. When somebody asks for, for a miracle or a favor, Jesus responds. If you got faith, that's going to be possible. And some people, sometimes they didn't have enough faith. And they start saying to themselves, Lord, please, increase my faith. Increase my faith. Or I, I want to have faith. In faith. Faith makes all things possible. That's what Jesus is saying. Believe. I'm not saying that believe only in me. Or Jesus is saying, I'm not saying that believe only in God. Believe also in me. It's good to believe in God. It's good to believe in the Heavenly Father. Believe. But we need to exercise this faith. We need to believe in our prayers that shall be answered. But we need to believe and pray with faith. Believing. In my personal opinion, we need to pray with faith, but we also, we need to make the efforts to do the right things. We need to to be in contact with God all the time when we are in trials and temptations, but we need to be also in contact with the brothers and sisters. We need to be wise. We fail most of the time because we are not wise. When we are in trials, in temptation, we don't look for help. We want to solve by or on by ourselves or own problems. But when you start to be calling and talking, getting help. Jesus said, believe in God. Have faith that God exists. It's so important this. Jesus also said, have faith that God is the creator. God is apostle, and also Jesus asked, believe in God, that God exists, that God is the creator, that all this universe, all this earth that we see was created by one creator, and that creator is God. Jesus also said, believing God means have faith that God is in control. God is in control of everything. Remember what Jesus said to Peter. Satan, Simon, Simon, Simon Peter, Satan has demanded permission. The devil asked permission to God to tempt us. That was Jesus said to Peter. And God gave the permission to Satan to tempt Peter. Because that is necessary. It's the same thing. Now, brothers and sisters, Satan is asking, he continues asking permission to God to tempt us. But Jesus continue interceding for us at the same way that he interceded for Peter. I have prayed for you. He continue interceding for us. He's the mediator. 
between God and man. He continued praying for us. The question is, why are we failing? Why Peter failed if Jesus was praying for him? Because sometimes we don't want to effort, we don't want to go in the narrow way. Because we can say, because we also, we are humans, we are weak. But every day, when you wake up, pray to the Lord. We are starting a new day. It's going to be a new day of temptations, or trials, or problems. Let's start the day praying. Even if we pray, the tempter is going to be attacking us. I rejoice. Every Sunday when I come right here and I see you. I'm so happy to see you. I feel stronger when I, I, I am with you. I'm just I'm waiting for this day. Not only if, if I had to be teaching right here. Only if, if, I, if I'm going to be among you. I feel protected. Because this is the church of the living God. Every time that I'm praying, I'm praying, Lord, help me. I don't know what's going what, what's gonna to be, how it's going to be this day. I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to continue in this faith. I want. This is my desire. We are going to be tempted every moment. Don't forget that. The tempter is continue doing his work. We have to continue doing our work. Believing in God. That's what Jesus said. Believe in God. Believe that he is the God that is in control of everything. But he's going to remember that he's going to get the moment. No more permission for Satan. This is going to be over. No more. Jesus said, believe also, it means we need to believe that Jesus came to save sinners. The name Jesus means Savior. He is the Savior of the sinners. We need to believe this one. We are sinners, and we need to believe that Jesus is saving us every day of the arms or from the attacks of the tempter. He's saving us. Jesus said, he's saying to the apostle, do, do not be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. Jesus also said, it's necessary to believe that he died for all sins. Jesus is savior of the sinners and Jesus decided to die for sinners. When we say that we believe in Jesus, we need to believe this. That he is the savior of sinners, that he died for sinners, and that he also arose from the grave. This is the gospel. This is the good news of salvation. Believe that Jesus is savior of sinners, that Jesus died for sinners, and that Jesus arose from the grave. That's what Jesus is saying to the apostle. Believe also in me. Jesus says, look beyond difficulties. He saw beyond difficulties. That's the reason he was calm. He saw beyond the denying of Peter or beyond the betrayal of Judas. And he saw beyond the cross, beyond the suffering. He saw to us. That's the reason that he decided to go to the cross. Because he saw beyond difficulties. 
Remember that Jesus was flesh. He suffered on the flesh. Temptations, struggles, many things. But Jesus was looking beyond difficulties. And that's what Jesus is saying to us. Look beyond difficulties. And he promised something. The version that Brother Todd read, he said, mansions are life more than war. In my version said, in my father's house are many dwelling places. But what is Jesus is saying that we need to look beyond difficulties is this one, mansions. He's saying, in my father's house, you believe in God? That's perfect. Believe also in me. Don't look your trials or temptation that you are having right now. Jesus said, look beyond that. In my father's house are many mansions awaiting for you. Many of us, we are not living in mansions. We are living in regular houses. But Jesus is promi promising a mansion for us. We don't have to be worried over there to be paying bills. No more. Or, or waking up early to driving many miles to go to work. No. A mansion forever. So if we are suffering right now, we don't, don't see only the suffering right now. See beyond the problem that we are having right now. Jesus said, this is a true promise. In my father's house are many dwelling places, many mansions. Tribulations are temporary and necessary. That's the reason that God is allowing to Satan tempt us. Because are necessary, but the Apostle Peter said, are temporary, are not forever. First Peter chapter 1, verse 6, in this you greatly rejoice, not in the tribulations, not in the temptation, no, no one is rejoicing in tribulations. We are sad, we are the, depressed. The context of the chapter, of the verse Five, or the verse 6, it's verse 5 and verse 4. He's saying the same thing that Jesus is promising when he said, in my father's house are many mentions. The apostle Peter is mentioned the same thing. Heaven. In this you greatly rejoice. In this means that heaven is awaiting for you. That the mansions are awaiting for you. First Peter chapter 1, verse, five, verse 4 and verse 5. Now, the context says, in this you greatly rejoice. Let's rejoice because a mansion is waiting for us. Even though now for a little while, if necessary. Let's pay attention to this word right here. If necessary, you have been distressed by various trials. It's necessary. It's necessary to grow up. When we are having problems, we are growing up. We become humble. If we are believing that we are so strong, we understand how weak we are. That we need to be depending always from the Lord. Always. The Apostle Peter said it's necessary, but rejoice because a mansion is awaiting people that is suffering for Christ. That's what Jesus said, if I go and prepare a place for you, 
I will come again. I'm going to come back. I'm going now to the cross. I'm going to rose after three days. But I'm going to come back. I'll co I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. Again, he's promising a mansion. Do not let your heart be troubled. Let's continue believing in God. Continue believing in me. In conclusion, if we think that all trials and temptations are great, it is because we haven't read the book of Job. Let's, we need to read more the book of Job. And one text I'm going to read, Matthew chapter 1. I'm sorry, Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. This is the invitation that Jesus is making this morning for every one of us. Jesus says, come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my joke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. This is the invitation of Jesus. If we are troubled, if we are troubled in our hearts, let's come to Jesus. He's waiting for us. If you are not a Christian this morning, we invite you to come to Jesus. He's calling you. Believe that he is the son of God. Believe that he can, he is able to save sinners. And believing in him, be baptized for the remission of your sins. According to the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 38. This is the lesson for this morning. God bless every one of you.